right. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's so funny. We have so many overlapping people we know and now we're meeting, so great. Yes, really cool. Yeah, and I've been enjoying your your um, emails and oh, yeah, yeah. Video, work on video and stuff that, you know. I've kind and of you're a fun emailer, time. for sure. You like respond with like emotional stories or like insights and stuff. Some people I feel like mm -hmm. I share things in email and it's just like a like a task that I've given them and they're like, oh no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like this academic kind of sense that can creep in, I think, a lot. And then there's that tyranny of the propositional, you know, that mm. I think yeah. gets bound up in emails a lot. Um, and I, I really try to like, you know, use what I've learned in circling and other activities <laughs> to bring that into a text format, you know, and keep that personal connection going to some extent. Yeah, 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 the circling. Uh, yeah, because I, I rewatched your or I watched your video with John, and you were like, I want to try that stuff, but you've been circling more oh, yeah. since then, I guess. Yeah, I've done. Um, I did a workshop with Authentic Relating Toronto. Oh, cool. Um, and that was super cool. That was like a thirteen-week thing. Wow. On you know circling and um, uh, the collective intelligence campfire practices that are you know trying to do like one of many one of many practices that's trying to bridge between like just circling empathy and then like sense making yeah yeah you know yeah. the the heart and the head so to speak um mm. you know brought together and um i've done a couple of those weekends with with john and um guy sangstock and you know those big philosophical <laughs> shindigs yeah so, those are super fun are you doing the next one that's yeah. coming up i think i will I, uh -huh. I'm so, I'm like overwhelmed um, with work right now, which is good, uh -huh. but you know, I kind of, I need to, um, I need to make sure I don't like over, overload myself. I'm starting to feel that burnout creeping in quite a bit. So oh, that's good. You know. That's wise. Yeah. Burnout is real. I studied organizational psychology. Mm. And so, uh, and in studying that I learned like, Ooh, don't work too much. Like, <laughs> work-life yeah. balance is really really important and like the life oh, part oh. is i think the, the more important part than um you do meaningful yeah. work like so you yes. help people and you're like a caring person um, yeah but even it's even that meaningful. right yeah yeah and it's it's so intense and it's like you know just being with people through a really hard shit that they're you know experiencing like you know I like signed on to it, like, oh, you know, I'll help, I'll help queer kids or people, you know, do this or that. Um, and then it was like, oh, but they're also homeless and they also have, you know, have a schizophrenia diagnosis. And, you know, like it's like so many people have like so many things happening that it can get overwhelming. Um, and the system is not entirely conducive to like what I feel like would be the most, the best practices. Um, maybe that's kind of a polite understatement, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Checking yeah. myself on that now, like 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 little holding back, but um, yeah, it's it's it can be really stressful to be pinned between those two things. I would say, like you know, just the realities of life that are pretty gruesome at times, and then the the kind of you know playing it safe kind of bureaucratic system that you know runs counter to what i've heard about evidence based practices even though they use that Can I term pause frequently. this my mom who never calls me is calling my phone really Oh quick. sure yeah All right uh, great sorry about that yeah No problem everything okay No she's good she's uh ubering home and she doesn't know how to use uber so i was trying to help oh. her do that uh so hopefully if she calls back again we might have to postpone but fingers crossed <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah totally totally <laughs> We yeah. talk about how compassionate we both are and then I just like abandoned my mom and some random place that would not be good. <laughs> right? We all like put in focus in different areas. <laughs> it's hard to like, be But my YouTube channel, it needs more views. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, are you going to Jen's um the next D logo circling? Workshop? Yeah, yeah. I love those. They're like, I don't know, just the perfect amount of everything, I think. Like it's mm. kind of long and the days are long. But then it's over in two days. And yeah. um, like you were saying, I think the balance of the philosophical and the like emotional interpersonal is so powerful. Yeah. Um, plus you get to practice with just strangers. So that I think breaks up yeah. any kind of uh, like 
preconceived rhythm that you might have with your friends or something. So sure. I just love that aspect of like, oh, I have to pay more attention now. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's, yeah, that's a good point. Sometimes there's like really amazing interactions, like with people you've never met before within five minutes. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. Especially like, like you said, if you've done a 13 week thing, you're getting all these skills and you get to bring that into those little meeting rooms and everything. And so like, I think the more, the more skillful you can bring into those meetings, just it's like so fun. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really um, can be stunning. Um, just like the, the depth of connection. And I like, yeah, would I have plans to do more circling proper as well, because I do want to just work hone those basics. Um, mm -hmm. What do you, you feel know? like circling uh, is, or maybe that's a bad question, but like the skills that it develops and how it helps someone uh, within or between? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking there's a lot of crossover actually in peer support and circling where it's like, you know, just that sense of um, one of the things that I love for myself, I guess, is candor, like moment by moment self-disclosure, you know, uh -huh. that is like relatively unfiltered, you know, like um, depending on your degree of comfort or whatever, and uh -huh. you know, can really get you more in touch with the other person in the moment. And that's really great. You know, obviously, um, the ability to take someone's perspective um, is huge, was huge, at least in the authentic relating workshop. You know, we spent uh -huh. a lot of time like working on like trying to choose like, what would it be like to be this person, you know, what, and to really feel that in our bodies and have that degree, a depth of empathy that, uh -huh. you know, goes beyond obviously most of our social life. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How do you describe then like the, normal social life of like America or the West or, or like Whew. yourself or something. Yeah, let's just to contrast it a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah, like I feel like it, like the term like preloaded comes to mind. Like we're just there with our memes and our cultural mm. cultural reference points, um, you know, expectations, all that stuff. But it's like, I feel like we're so in a sense like hijacked by like, you know, I mean, I don't want to blame it all on social media, but just memetics and you know, all that stuff that's happening. And um, it just feels so hard to, to like put that all aside for a moment with mm -hmm. people and just be there with them in the unknown of that. Like, I feel like the unknown is really, especially, maybe it's not always been this way, but it feels especially scary right now. Like you meet someone from a different political group or something and you're just <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You like can't be unknown and vulnerable. You have to be ready. That's, that's my feeling you know yeah yeah I love what you said because uh like I go to the sauna and every once in a while like a conversation will happen it is mostly people on their phones but like sometimes mm -hmm. people will talk mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sometimes politics will come up and it's so I think it's kind of interesting but it's also dangerous a little bit of like trying to find the the truth that you can say that doesn't throw you into a category you don't want to be in and then wind yeah. you down into a road because these narratives just emerge and then yeah. especially if someone like cites kind of like a mythological source of like oh this documentary that's not even like scientific or it's not validated um, and then all of a sudden like the mythos like takes yeah. over um and then just trying yes. to say like okay I'm more moderate than that or I like part yeah. of that but not all of it like or, or what I like trying to stay in the yeah activity. um yeah <laughs> totally yeah like what I would what I am seeking is like I was really inspired by you know Socrates as you know sort of filtered through John Verbeke and like you know that kind of image of of that co-questing with people mm -hmm. um that I would really like to pick up again and so I've I've tried it in some ways you know just like having like really like try to drop these bomb questions in with people in, in regular <laughs> public conversations <laughs> or whatever. Usually it's what is gender is usually where I go because uh -huh. um, I like have had these, have had this this question myself for so long that I just, you know, ask it of baristas or of people on Facebook or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, just oh, random great, things, yeah. you know, and it's, it's interesting because you do feel sometimes the sense of like just like the what's known just like dropping away like people mm. there is a sense of like I don't know if it's a poria you know like in a major way for people on the street but it's like like I like for instance 
a barista I was talking to saw my philosophy book I had I forget who it was yeah you know, something about Plato and it was like he's like oh well Plato you know you know he thought philosophers should be kings and he was a philosopher big coincidence there you know like kind of <laughs> coming from that you know postmodern power critique thing that Greg Enriquez always talks about you uh-huh. know um valid or whatever but that was like his whole summary of Plato um, right. of his class in college and he's like well you know I've studied a lot of philosophy in my gender classes because I know a lot about gender blah 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 and I was like oh, okay so what is gender and then it was like nothing like he was like uh oh, well you know it takes a long time to to talk about I can't really you know say that in five minutes or whatever and I was yeah, like yeah, okay yeah. you know what I mean it like it he shifted gears from like well I know a lot of stuff to like this like kind of back on the heels a little bit all of a sudden like okay maybe when you're you know, when you're trying to win an argument it's different than when you're trying to learn and like what you reminded me of when you said that is like I used to teach a lot in person and I used to teach a lot of big class I do a lot more tutoring now so it's more one on one but I love just like asking a common question to a group of people that are open minded because mm. like they'll say things that are predictable but they'll also surprise you too and it's like oh. both that are kind of cool to watch and again like if you can kind of dance yeah. and not get sucked into your own point of view and especially yeah. like I like to learn so I I try to mm-hmm. like it's just fun to hear like a person 15 years younger than you say something in a way that like you wouldn't say um yeah. or say something totally stereotypical or say something mm-hmm. way off or like that you know is somehow wrong or something it's just it's all so interesting and yeah you know it reminds you that like even in you know the world's always changing like like your parents view is not our view is not 20 year olds view and and so the whole it's mm-hmm. fun to, to kind of do that with people and then notice rather than just like try to dig into your point of view or yeah have that kind of uh moment yeah yeah I think I could have gone you know I could have gone with like well you know I've learned a lot about gender from my you know blah 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 yeah you know, yeah and then we'd have this like non-conversation basically even <laughs> yeah, though we yeah, would, yeah. you know maybe agree politically or socially about a lot of the stuff you know mm-hmm. um, it still wouldn't be meaningful but you know, I imagine you you're talking like intergenerationally. So there's a lot that you're thinking about in terms of maybe like teacherly authority and what that constitutes and and how do you help people distinguish good from bad reasoning and that kind of thing or yeah, cause, well, because just what you're saying, like just asking a question and then listening but not judging is developmental, right? Like if a person yeah. gives an honest response and then you instead of yeah. trying to like do something to it, just go, yeah. huh, oh yeah, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, especially mm. with someone way younger than you, like yeah. John does this very well to bring in like another common thread that we have is, mm-hmm. is my friends will say like, oh, he's really good listening. Cause I'm always just listening to what he's saying. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. he is oh, really, yeah. really like patient with conversation and cares yeah. about the other person's point of view and he'll change. Yes what not he'll change during a conversation but definitely after conversations like he'll go mm-hmm. oh yeah I'm, I'm now I'm thinking this way um yeah and so it's true yeah so yes. having that like learning motive um or appreciating mm-hmm. like you're kind of savoring what they're saying rather than trying to um again like judge it or whatever he'll yeah judge it yeah I wonder how much of that comes from his like you know his his um tr- attempting to get around the false idol of monological monological certainty that he talks about you know and yeah. working as a as a I don't know, team collective consciousness whatever like seems like you're always like l- it's like it's like you're learning but it's mixed in with that questing aspect but it's also mixed in with giving your viewpoint and perspective and you know like when when I start to when I think about you know myself versus others you know as a paradigm and then like the together questing paradigm I, it's it's like then it, it kind of undercuts that distinction between learning and giving your viewpoint if that makes sense like you know am I, this conversation, am I the teacher or am I the student here and, and like you know sometimes people vie to be the teacher of the other person or whatever uh-huh. when you're like in it together you're like teacher and student and right more, right you know so much flow that's happening potentially um and it, it's like yeah it's one thing about like John that I try, I try to emulate through 
um, thinking about his philosophy of, of dialogue and dialogos, especially. Yeah, because sometimes you're teaching a point, but sometimes you're like exploring a topic with more experience mm -hmm. than other person or with yeah. less or whatever, or with just your experience. And that, yeah. that kind of like still having curiosity or, or wonder about what's happening and about the other person, like, yeah. um, that's yeah, yeah. It's so powerful. And then, and then, I don't know, like you said, I think starting to think in terms of collective intelligence, instead of thinking you're like this independent monologuing <laughs> creature yeah. is really yeah. like a different <laughs> um, mode. Yeah. yeah. This feels like, even as like thinking about it, it feels like such a relief, you know, in my lower ribs. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> what Robert's saying is like reflecting on me as this liberating thing because it's so easy to constantly. It does feel good because then there's trust and respect. And yeah. um, especially like when you're talking about a topic that matters, then there's like even potential for reverence and mm -hmm. awe or, or discovery. Like we've said a few yes. times and you've said um, mm -hmm. that, I don't know, like proving you're right. I mean, sometimes you want to, and I guess someone has to run the political show or so. I don't know. I just avoid that stuff mostly, but. Yeah, it's... I'm struggling with like where that, yeah, what role <laughs> there is for monological certainty and very, you know, like where that would be appropriate. Just like step in, maybe step in and step out of, you know, and. and well, yeah, the skillfulness you know. of it. Yeah, I think you're right. Because if it's done skillfully, like if you're being paid, to teach someone or you're being paid to train uh, like new hires at your organization or something, you don't want to be like, yeah. let's just see what happens. Like there is some learning yeah. that you need to do some <laughs> monologue or like, something. Like what do you think this job is like when you are when you haven't done it yet? You know? Right, I mean, right, right. There's yeah. exactly, there is a place for that stuff. But. Like, yeah, you can gather some, some perspective, but also they're expecting you to deliver something helpful, which yeah, it's like a responsibility, right? Right, right. Your responsibility can be to, to do that for sure. Yeah. That's where I try to, I try to separate out like, I don't know, maybe this, this might be from John or might be from my like background in like philosophical anarchism somewhat, but just like separating out like authority from responsibility and mm. trying to tease that apart. Like, you know, the, the, especially the idea of like, unquestioned authority like is something that I try to you know oppose I guess in some ways but like um think about okay maybe reframing as much authority of, as responsibility as possible or just putting it into that terms of responsibility to see what it looks like from that perspective you know and then say well this is provisional authority based on the needs of you know the group or whatever and this person is taking responsibility within the group to to handle that authority um, versus like this person just has it, you know, like um, and that's what I, I'm trying to think about with with regard to the political world. Um, Cause like I, like you, I've tried to steer clear. We've talked about this before, <laughs> you, like in a group too, like that we try to stay clear of the culture wars, you know, debates and all that stuff. Like some of us in, yeah. you know. Um, it never works and, out. Yeah, it just feels <laughs> like, it feels like a no-win situation all around. Like, I feel like I can't avoid it. I can't, I can't fight it. I can't address it. I can't, you know, like this week, especially there's so much going on in the United States. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Supreme Court that it's like out of control everywhere. Everyone I talk to is like completely riled up. So. Right. There, yeah. It's all it's like John and, and Christopher Master Pietro have that scale from like reacting to responding mm, he's like that's and, cool I'd yeah like to dig into that a little bit yeah yeah so like like you know everyone reacts right uh, uh i was at the park and i saw baby alligator and i thought like oh my reality changed right now there's an adult alligator within like 20 yards of me or something <laughs> like that so i need to like yeah. react uh oh yeah but then yeah. like okay do i do it more deliberately or automatically, right? That's, mm. I think where, um, and even what you're mm. saying with like the responsibility mm. to authority, like if you can say like, mm. yes, I'm an authority, but it's only in service of these specific needs and only temporarily, like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Maybe then you can be a little more reflective 
It sounds like what you're saying. And yeah, that's it's the difference. I think because like, you know, if you, yeah, if you see a, a person walk in the street, you don't want to like ponder it. Like, what's the meaning of if I kill them or not? Like, would that be, <laughs> totally. you know, so you just want to go, ah! Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like necessary to somehow work with these two. I guess there's like that, you know, implicit reasoning and explicit reasoning and learn when mm -hmm. to use each system or mode. Right. You know, which right. is like super difficult. And I, yeah, it seems like, it seems like we're bringing a lot of the implicit stuff into the political realm, um, unexamined. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know? There's no common value the ground anymore. It's just yeah. like, mm -hmm my job is to destroy you when I perceive you as a threat or my yeah. job is to like affirm you as I, if I see you as like a tool for my power or something like that. Like it's a yeah. very, yeah. Um, it's hard to say like, well, I see it differently, but I'm still interested in your point of view, but are you interested in mm -hmm. mine? Like those, like agree yeah. and disagree kind of old fashioned stances. <laughs> Yeah, to be able to have the good faith discussions, like, I mean, you know, you have to make yourself a little vulnerable to kind of test the waters and then see what happens. But if you don't make yourself vulnerable enough, then you're still kind of like cowering behind your, the shield of your, you mm -hmm. know, viewpoint. And so it's like how much to do that given this climate where like, it feels like people could still be doing a gotcha even when they seem to be extending goodwill, you know, yeah. that, that is tricky for me, especially like given my, I don't like, I try and I like, don't like to forward my gender identity, but that just, it just is a reality for me that that can really hurt. Um, of course, like that, that to yeah. be the case, you know? So yeah, something I like Well, even when someone like, like, like if someone assumes I'm uh, rich or assumes mm -hmm. I had it easy, and they don't know, like, no, I've lived in really, really poor neighborhoods. I've seen my mm -hmm. mother really struggle to pay bills. And mm -hmm. just like, you know, and that gets passed over. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this hurts when you're making fun of the poor because I mm -hmm. identify with the people that you're mocking. Yeah, um, yeah. And it gets really tricky when people don't consider their audience or consider other people's feelings, really. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a big deal, you know, and there's the whole, like, um, hopefully is swearing all right on this channel. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like there's a little like, you know, fuck your feelings um statement yeah. that gets tossed around a lot in different ways. And I'm like, well, you know, according to you know, well, all I I know, you know, from the bleacher seats about neuroscience, like feelings factor into every rational decision uh -huh. that we make. And so that can't be the way we do politics. We can't, you know what I mean? Like none of this. Like yeah, I no, get it. Civil. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, and when you're trying to like, again, like like building relationships, you want to say like, even if you disagree with someone's like feeling or someone's thoughts, you want to try and say like, okay, I see where you're coming from, or mm -hmm. can you see it this way? There's there's different ways of presenting yeah. uh, like a, a different opinion than, uh, yeah, just I, feelings matter too, for sure. Like, I think the more yeah. I've done like circling and even mm -hmm. fellowship and had deeper friendships, Mm. like I care a lot about my friends feelings I I hope they care about mine and yeah <laughs> the idea that like oh we should all I don't know be part of this like blind tribe that uh yeah just uh, yeah so weird uh, yeah yeah and I feel like you know and I feel like you really do exemplify that to me like in the like even in emails you're very yeah, careful yeah. to keep that Good. personhood going too which I really like a lot um mm. because I feel um sometimes like in what's called the sense making space or whatever like there's a certain dryness like a I like call it like the meta 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 you know like, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like so all good. the air is sucked out of the room because it's just perspectives on perspectives on perspectives and like the heart I feel like the heart gets lost in that a lot yeah. you know, or it has been for me lately that's been my 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 feeling my sense of the sense making world yeah, yeah. Like that way and I really you know I'm appreciating more right now at least people who do think about the pathos you know as much as mm -hmm. like there are like arguments and fights about you know whatever like game b movie versus dark renaissance critique of that movie <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, yeah. you know what i mean like, yeah, but i feel yeah. like uh, dark rennies have a point when it comes to some of that emotional stuff 
like i mean they have you know they're more like you know fucking and killing or whatever is kind of <laughs> how they presented it but also you know like just the heart of care is what um you know i want to i feel like i need to like withdraw into that sometimes like away mm. from all the, the meta everything if that makes sense sorry that i like that you know like no that was excellent I, I love the meta 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 and because <laughs> it's it's um it's so easy to go back up into cognition and yeah. reject everything else and go oh like yeah. uh what what are the terminology that we need to use or what are the arguments and what is the yeah. um that's why i love to bring in socrates because you brought him up already um He's really caring about character, even in all the dialogues. Mm -hmm. It's not to gain more knowledge, but to like care about the people he's talking about and to care about the yeah. truth. I mean, the truth isn't unimportant, but sure, yeah. the and idea that like- Tied into those those two, like tie together, right? Right, exactly. It's, it's all of those. I think the good is definitely like feelings. Like there's a lot mm -hmm. of like vitality yeah. in the good. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, the idea that you go, oh, what's that point? Oh, I disagree on that point. That's oh, actually this other thing. Oh, well, I read this book this way. Then it's oh, and Nietzsche yeah. and Heidegger. It's like, wait, where are we now? I'm not in a world of yeah. like that I can touch anymore. Like, where's food yeah. and stuff? Like, <laughs> totally, totally. It's like it brings up uh, Kendrick Lamar's line from his recent album, like, "Show me you real. Show me that you bleed." You know, like where. Yeah. where are you you know in all these books <laughs> yeah because that's a defense mechanism a lot of times or like like a just mm -hmm. a, a carelessness of attention to just be super intellectual um yeah yeah and, it is yeah. yeah the vulnerabilities that you bleed you know that's like like if you're real you are vulnerable it, that totally you know it's a like it's a challenge to me to to be more that way myself because i, I do like I've come to trust the people in the the, the community, this corner of the internet. That well, that's what's nice, yeah, is there's a lot of, even even when people get intellectual, they're pretty good faith and they don't mean yeah. negative things. They're not trying to control you or something with a right. with an argument, like a, like a marketer totally. is trying to like, hey, believe this. I really want you to believe it. Believe it, believe it. Oh, now you vote for me or now you buy my stuff. They're just doing it more um, yes. as, a, as that's their personality, I think. Yeah, they're bullshitting around the truth with by selling personality and and an image, right? Like mm. that it totally yeah, it feels very different in a lot of the sense making world. And I've learned to just especially trust those people who I just get a over time a feeling of goodness. Like that is that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, very important to me at this stage. Um, whereas before it was like, oh, cool philosophy is an interesting. <laughs> new takes on hot takes on things and meta perspectives and you know all that um mm -hmm. because that was lacking like all that was missing from my life right you don't not need it yeah like it is it is yeah. good to have, be able to um <laughs> understand people when they speak or uh engage when it is useful to engage like in the ontology and epistemology and the you know mm -hmm. all of the the that linguistic stuff um yeah and it makes you think totally. too, like especially like I think mm -hmm. it's it's kind of cool that John studied so much philosophy and then jumped into really a much harder science, like mm -hmm. you know a AI and cognition, and you you can't really be philosophical in those those domains uh, unless you're in a really really weird niche, which he's much broader, I think. Yeah. Um, but he brings that to bear, and and it's like it's a cool balance to. To have even like like another thing I, I love about you is like you're interested in art and and okay it's like yeah we have there's a world of art guys it's not just this black and white narrow linguistic yeah. world there's things popping out at us and grabbing our attention and and yeah. transforming us through aesthetic uh experience and uh, yeah we are doing this like cool thing on the, the awakening from the meaning crisis discord like alexander zakari is Sorry, Alexandra and Zachary Zachary um, is has really done like almost all the work for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a dialogos type of group based in artwork. Art like it would be like if you took art appreciation and you put it in dialogos format and then you yeah, respond yeah, yeah. with your own creative works, you know, as part of the process. Like and and that really was cool to me. Like we're in the middle of it right now. Um, the first like experimental group, but um 
Yeah, yeah what's that it's like? Like, well. just expand on that. Yeah, it's really cool because it's. Um, I think it it's it does force you somewhat more out of the propositional and into your perspectival, um, you know, just like reflecting on your own life and how this art, the way that, that at least that Alexandra set it up, you know, yeah. um, was just like able to bring more of the, the whole person into it in, in a way. I mean, you can totally do that with philosophical fellowship, obviously, and, and often there are like whole body experiences that happen in those, in those <laughs> Zoom rooms, but you know, like there's also a tendency in philosophical fellowship to suddenly just be like, oh, well, you know, this book I read by Kierkegaard, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> like it can get really dry quickly. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, fortunately, I'm, I'm ignorant of a lot of that stuff. <laughs> so it's like less of a thing, but I did, I was kind of like, oh, this is, you know, it can get a little bit like bypassing the human side. Whereas with the art, there's just, you know, it's just a different, a different complementary practice that brings more perspectival knowing in, I think. Art is like if you if you drop it down into like a person, it is like perception, not like cognition. It's very much yeah. like, oh, what's that? Oh, what does that mean? Oh, what's that over? How do those relate? Yeah. Like not not linguistically, but like, is that uh, pelican going to be afraid of that seagull, or what are they going to do now? That squirrel yeah, getting totally. close to another squirrel, and, and just <laughs> it's more active and exactly. especially good art, like good art. Yeah. Yes. What and is the, the process ambiguity. like? Um, it's very similar. She based it on like, you know, kind of standard philosophical circling practices, but modified, tweaked it quite a bit. Um, yeah, so it's yeah. like a definite, like a check-in circling face-to-face -face without the art. We don't see the art in advance. Okay. You know, it's like she presents it on screen and then we take, there's a little meditation period before that, you know, like a just um, simple kind of body and breath meditation. And then um, we look at the art in silence for a period, then we come back and we reflect on certain things. And then we look at it again, and then we reflect on memories that it brings up from our own life and then look at it again. And then we have more of an interactive dialogue where we're working on our skills of listening to each other and reflecting back and, you know, saying, did I hear that right? And then, you know, comparing our interpretations and experiences at that stage. Do you find like afterwards or a day or two later, or just like, are you, does it have an impact on you outside of the experience or, or is the experience really unique? Like, how does it, how does it actually play out? Um, yeah, it did feel like, so by the end of this, for, we just did one so far and then this week okay. we're gonna present our um, response works. Oh, cool. So we're each doing, you know, ideally something really um, amateur <laughs> is, the, is the point, you know, like, Alexander was like, well, if you're a musician, maybe try finger painting or something, you know, like. Oh, cool, yeah, yeah. Like, like try to not be good at it for its own for the sake of being good at it but you're just you know learning to process through reflecting on that work and then creating your and creating your own work in response to that work but also the dialogue that you had around it oh wow um, That's yeah excellent. so it's been in my week my whole week has been kind of like processing the oh, experience wow. of that you know and then like working on like like for me, it ended up being music just because I play so much guitar that I couldn't help myself. Oh, like cool. I just started to write a song about it accidentally, but just thinking about that experience and and feeling, you know, and the the kind of sense I had at the end of the first group that I was like literally like underwater looking up at the painting. Yeah, yeah. And I'm kind of just like stayed with that physical sort of sense. So that's yeah. excellent. Yeah. So you're like you're having these kind of non-propositional inter-social experiences around this, the sacred object, this art. And yeah. then you're trying to kind of reconnect to it and like keep the relationship kind of alive or moving and then yeah. doing stuff with it. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Cause with, with philosophical fellowship, um, it's an interesting question of like, okay, how can we, like bring that out of the practice or mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. keep it keep it moving in, in that direction and and yeah. what activities like that's I love that there's like this kind of playful homework um yeah. to to do that is artistic as well uh, totally cool. it's like I also yeah. love Alexandra to be for the record like she's uh just so enthusiastic and fun to be mm -hmm. around that, yes. Um, yeah, we we get along great. I, I uh, oh, cool, good. Yeah, you yeah, two are yeah. both great in the scene, and she's like one of those like really kind of semi behind the scenes move. Like she just does a lot. 
no no yeah i know i know it's done you know for sure yeah she's very um it's cool how much she cares and how yeah it's not about her status she's not doing it to like well i'm gonna put this presence of myself all over the place it's like you watch what she's like oh yeah she's really like wants to preserve the community or she's trying to bring something fun or um, yeah yeah, she's really good-hearted about uh all that stuff for sure yeah she's taught me a lot about bringing a sense of care to like discord settings and stuff and interactions with people Mm. so care is care is kind of it right like if you if I know what you care about, I know a lot, a lot, a lot about you. And like, yeah. if I'm conscious of what I care about and I try to foster those things and I try yeah. to find out what like is, I don't care about and, and reduce those things. Um, yeah. Like that's a big part of thriving for me or, or like the mm-hmm. Socratic, like know thyself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Relevance realization, right? It is way. though. Yeah. Cause what you care about, like if you don't think of it as like what I know, but like who I am through my caring, there's such a yes. different yes. Um, way of relating to the world and yourself. Totally, like you said, the Socratic self-knowledge as opposed to the narrative autobiographical, yeah. exclusive, <laughs> exclusively narrative self-knowledge, yeah. Yeah, it's really important. And again, like I'm, I'm, follow, I'm looking for those people who over, usually over time, because I don't know how else to do it, like I get a sense of care from that feels, mm dedicated to the good I guess for lack of a better way of putting it just the good-hearted people is sort of my you know yeah yeah yeah. no that, that's what trust is when you when you um uh yeah just start to go oh I I, I know you that's well that's what you were saying like vulnerability yeah. earlier is yeah. so important like like the the mutual self-disclosure that John talks about um even I think the first time at Alexandra I tried to do that and I try to do that with people and go okay you shared with me let me share with you or let me just share first mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. there's like this mm-hmm. low level flow state and everyone's mm-hmm. happy mm-hmm. and then if it didn't mm-hmm. work out you know why too because if your personalities clash when you're being open mm-hmm. maybe yeah. you're not meant to be or whatever or maybe yeah that's- maybe that's like a higher challenge level for later kind of thing, right you know? right yeah because because also like i'm super high in openness and i like people mm-hmm. But I need to go like, no, I need to actually close the wall a little bit here. Like we've Ooh, both yeah. been really open. Let's uh let's honor those negative feelings or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something you said about the sharing too brought back. Um, you were asking earlier about skills from empathy circling. Yeah, and yeah, one yeah. of the things I liked from I think it was the T group exercise we did primarily, but it could be brought into anything, was this this little hand signal of like disclose more of yourself if you're asking curious questions of another uh-huh. you know so if I'm like well Robert like you know I don't know what what were your personal problems growing up you know tell me all about those then it's like well I should you know in a tea group setting I mean that would be a weird question sort of to ask there but like if I you know I would want to be more self-disclosing I would want to offer something that's kind of the the practice there um and people so, remind each other to do that with this hand signal if, so if i'm not doing it you like would give the hand signal or how would how yeah if like you're asking someone if you're asking john like you know well john like how do you feel about this and that this um political issue and like how does it relate to your um you know religious upbringing and blah blah, blah you know like really like, drilling kind of intense questioning or something uh-huh. so this is like an extreme example but then no, you know, this is good, like, yeah. like, like maybe you should disclose what your religious background is or your sense of politics or something you know what uh-huh. I mean like, okay um that I mean tea groups don't usually get into those kind of big right. philosophical <laughs> issues but you know <laughs> to, to make it really obvious that would be yeah crazy. but if, yeah if you're talking about something that's getting kind of either too dry or like yeah. not really real or something yeah. you can just go like that yeah and like too like not enough self-disclosure and too much like you know like am i safe to be with this person i need to drill them to see if they're cool enough to oh you know i, I mean, see safe with or whatever but also i do need you know in addition to what you're saying like to avoid like s- too much dryness or whatever but you're also like opening yourself yeah yeah to some degree before as an offering before you just like ask them to tell tell that you is know, really yeah, yeah yeah that's why it's so fun to do that like within yeah. um yeah I was just walking this morning and I started to I was I was I'd meditated so I was kind of like introverted and not really trying to be social and then this guy came up and started talking to me 
And then I just tried to share something. I just tried to like, okay, he's being really personal. I should mm-hmm. at least like participate in this mm-hmm. as well and not just stay in my little introverted bubble mm-hmm. while mm-hmm. this is happening. And then mm-hmm. I ran into him 20 minutes later and we had another really short, nice talk. And I'm sure like the openness at least mm-hmm. didn't hurt. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sense. Yeah, I kind of exercised yourself. <laughs> like, more. yeah, like those little practices can come into daily life for me as well. Like peer support is a big example where it's like, even though I'm a peer and not a mental health professional, you know, mm-hmm. um, in yeah, the mental health system, you know, I'm more of like a, a buddy that you're kind of like developing a relationship with in order to achieve your goals rather than someone who tells you what's wrong with you and how to fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no offense to the therapists out there. I know that's not, you know. The, no, no, but you're like a friend and a mentor kind of like somewhere. Yeah. And even range. like on an equal ground in a sense, like mm-hmm. that's how I look at it. Some people look at peers as like, well, I've recovered from X condition or mm-hmm. I've gotten through gender transition or something. And so therefore I know more than you, which, mm-hmm. you know, again, there's some experience there but like also like you have your own perspective and so we're trying to like recognize each other's perspective so that we can create this relationship that hopefully transcends both of us and and helps accomplish the work that needs to get done and then for me like disclosing myself more is a bigger part of that because if I'm like coming in acting like a therapist like oh well tell me about this tell me about that you know Mm. um that doesn't you know that's not like a friendship I think of peer support is more like friendship than yeah yeah than therapy would be although it's got to be qualified pretty carefully like what that relationship is but you know to me in, in a sense it's like if your friend comes over you're having a hard time they come over for you know coffee or you know wine or something and you're right like, right you know what I mean like you're not they're not just going to be like so tell me about this tell me about that and you know right so your presence is there as a, as a human being and like you're yeah. trying to help their presence as well totally um, co-presencing and hoping to get participatory knowing uh-huh. um, first and just keep that that boat established wow and how long do you get to know people for is it like a set amount of time or is it yeah it does vary um there's the, the programs unfortunately um often have a, a a higher pace than I would like. Like they drop you in with goals immediately, sometimes with people. So like, it would be like right away, you know, by within six months, this person will have, you know, gotten a job and been able to keep it and demonstrated that they can keep or mm-hmm. something like that, which is six months is not an unreasonable amount. But yeah. what I'd like to do in the first few sessions is not work toward goals, but to establish, you know, more personal connection. And if they want to start talking about their goals, great, you know, we go yeah. there. But, um, you know no goals can, get the goals out of here we're just friends you, now <laughs> you can't have goals we're buddies we're, let's, yeah. go, let's go get some coffee yeah um, which is what peer supporters get accused of by um mental health professionals at times you know just oh, all you're doing is going out for coffee with it. people yeah yeah but that's like, important yeah. like i didn't appreciate that just to, to relate but, oh yeah so, so you were saying how long is it a, a, oh yeah and so like the, the paperwork makes you say how you address the goals every session pretty much okay so that's that puts a big ramp on my style like it's uh-huh. you know and I, I will say like the first couple sessions like we're building rapport or we're doing this you know uh-huh. and so the goals will this, this is pursuant to the goals because we need to have an adequate relationship in place you know that kind of thing yeah, but yeah. It's, they really don't want it for like more than a couple weeks <laughs> sometimes and I'm just kind of like eh, you know we should we should have it depends on the person we're working with and the 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 social worker involved in that kind of thing. So uh-huh. Sometimes they're way more flexible. Like you get six months to just feel out what this person might want to do with their life or something. Uh-huh. That's, that I feel like that's more appropriate and proper, although contrary to the financial constraints. No, Medicaid. yes, John's <laughs> talked about that as well. Um, like, and and I've experienced that and seen it in people. Like, how if you're in the like the mental health system for support it's mm. so rationed and so mm. yes. regulated and stuff and and uh to the detriment mm. of both the people that are in like the therapist role or the peer role and the client role or the person mm. role like mm. it really like straddles everybody a lot of times um because yeah. it's such yeah. a resource-based thinking um, it is very scarcity and very like immediate you know and it's like a lot of these people aren't ready for the goals that are written on paper for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they might have come up with those goals supposedly, but 
in in a lot of time a lot of cases they have not come up with those goals or they or they sort of like you know kind of like yeah sure that works fine and then they're not really ready to do um the yeah. thing that they're supposed to be doing entirely or there's some barriers that were hidden and that kind of thing you know so then we have to try to reevaluate the goals and, the, and that stuff yeah that's why it's so tough because I, I used to volunteer um with this group and i did it multiple years because it was so just profound and, and impressive and that it was this woman her name is uh vicky and uh she's in tampa here where i'm at and she started, she just heard her husband, I don't know how exactly, but they started just mentoring this one uh, young adult who mm. had family who was homeless and they were homeless. And mm. then the mayor at the time heard about her and gave her a little funding. And then it went mm. so well, she got more funding and more funding. And now she has like this multi like building organization and they wow. have housing and all this amazing stuff. Mm. And so I, I teach and they had gotten um like a partnership with the company i worked with to give them some prep and i was always i'd come in i'd have like a tie on and I'd have my little erasers and markers and, and it'd be like it would start at like, like 1 p.m and i'm like it's 101 we need to start and and the, they'd all be eating all the students and, 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 oh, and like yeah. they'd be talking and playing and stuff and i'm like but we have to start they need to get the grades and uh, you know she because I, I just admired her and respected her and like we got along really really well you know she told me like no 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 this this seems like they could be doing this later but like if you haven't eaten regularly normally yeah. like this is a huge deal and if you're yeah. like this is the most love that they're getting kind of in their yeah. month or something like that yeah and it would just sink in and and she like cited some sources and different things and, and made me realize like oh where i solve a lot of my problems with like my education and money they solve mm -hmm. it like emotionally and through their network of friends and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And just like mm -hmm. kind of realizing, oh, it's not wasting time. It's actually building kind of like a version of rapport. It's yeah. building emotional surplus and stuff. Um, yeah, it is. That's yeah. Like it's, yeah. I don't know if you had to document that, but that's that's part of the trick for me is like, the system doesn't want you to like just have fun or just right, hang out, right. you know? Well, I just started doing it for free. I started volunteering and I said like, oh, I'll come back okay. if you guys need it. So then it became like, I'm not accountable to anyone, but my own like commitments and stuff. And, yeah. and again, like Good it was you. just seeing it. It's like, oh yeah, there's this whole world that isn't run by like efficiencies and processes mm. and merit mm. and mm. timelines and stuff. And then mm -hmm. because again, the program was so awesome. Like I met people, this this one boy, he, um would do push-ups instead of like practice when I was trying to get him to do practice and I'm like oh what are you doing and I met him like six years later and he was just graduating college wanted to be a mentor was yeah. like hello how are you doing like a, a complete metanoia doesn't even describe like he was a <laughs> person and uh -huh. so again you see the connections yeah. of like oh this works you can take like six adults and love mm -hmm a person that wants to be loved and give them yes. support and resources and give it to them for a long yeah. time. One of the unique things about her program is they stuck mm -hmm. through college. So like these were high schoolers, like not even just through high school, but then through college. So they had like this whole second family. For oh, six yeah. Or seven. Yeah. So, so I, I get what you're saying about that's how like, the, oh, what time is the train running? It's behind schedule. Like that's not the mentality. Yeah, um, then you don't treat people like they're like in love is such a it is like a you I mean you can't write it on paperwork like well you know <laughs> I gave them love for an hour and a half yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know um, but it takes time and it it yeah it's a it's a slower process often for people who haven't received that and don't even know how love like they it feels right. horrible to them at first or exactly awkward it. or right you know, they've only had dysfunctional or no relationships. And like yeah. their friends are kind of like subtly abusive and yeah. or just tuned out or things like totally. that. Totally. Um, and you have to wait until like maybe they try to be abusive to you and then you have to, you know, respond appropriately over and over and different Right. Ways. And then the boundaries get built and then they have, like, they start to change. And yeah, it's, yeah I love that, that kind of programs. And, and I have a neighbor who also volunteers and does oh. Big Brother stuff. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, it sounds so cheesy or it sounds like, why are you doing that when you could be an accountant or something oh, <laughs> but yeah. but yeah, yeah it's it's you're really changing human lives when it works out yeah 
it ties so much into like all the meaning crisis and the religion it's not a religion to me like it's very much like the on the ground you know arm for me of of my my religion that's not a religion or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know that's it's it's like the closest thing to like interpersonal spiritual practice I do on a daily mm. basis you know I would say I mean that's that's putting too much of a bow on it probably but you know like sometimes it's ugly and just horrible but you well know. that's why it takes like you know therapists have their own therapists and, and you have your own practices yeah. and your own social yeah. network and stuff too totally and even like I would I would have that like the push-up moment and I would talk to like mm -hmm. older teachers or like a, a work colleague or something or or the woman and go like here's how I handled it was that the worst way possible or what happened what would you do <laughs> and start to yeah. learn and again those those dialogues are so interesting yeah um, they are they are you reflect on it in peer support we have this thing called cold reflection which is like you mm. know like a pure way of doing um clinical supervision so to speak like with a with a, a supervising therapist or something yeah yeah yeah. It's, it's the version that's more like well this is what you know this is what i'm hearing from you is that right you know basically mm -hmm. and just kind of mulling it over together and that's that's and i do have a supervisor i have a therapist as well that i talk over these oh, cool. things with and yeah just do all these practices and yeah it's to be honest like the work is not doesn't grade on me as much as the system around mm -hmm. the work does well even when it's not going well so that's something that i um have come up against that i really struggle like all of my resources are not availing me so much um when i just feel the sense of like oh i don't know like not hopelessness but of just coming up against this mighty dark wall of <laughs> bureaucracy or something and the you know i guess like like for instance, I was listening to Greg Enriquez's podcast. Oh, and I forget the other person, but they, another psych um, psychologist, and they were talking about how, in, in all the big like good meta analyses and studies, like a doctorate of psychology doesn't do any better in therapy than like a random, bio, you know, like biology bachelor's degree <laughs> holder or something. Yeah. And they're just like, this is astounding! Like, holy shit! Like, yeah, this yeah. mean, you know? And I'm like. The system doesn't even know what it's doing and that's part of the frustration for me is that they don't have a clue but all of this paperwork and justification that's built up is is a pretense and it's there to make sure that it looks like you're doing the work that they're paying you to do um, by putting it in propositional terms and saying you know rather than like i couldn't just have the person and me sitting in silence for an hour in presence with each other maybe that's like yeah, yeah. the most healing thing for them you know but i couldn't do that and get paid for it in, mm -hmm. like in one of the programs i work in so that was kind of long way of like it's hard to describe all of the no no <laughs> I, I make sure that, like it's frustrating you know? like it's frustrating because to you it's not like for some extrinsic like reward like money or things like that like that might be part of it, it might be an important yeah. part of it but yeah like it's more of like a calling or something like in the, the org psych yeah. literature they have callings and i've always thought like mm, in yeah, america yeah. like you could do what you want as a calling because we have access to this massive economy you can make as much money yeah. as you want or you could just take a pay cut or a time sink cut and then do something beautiful mm -hmm. that really mm -hmm. matters mm -hmm. to you um yeah or at least yeah. try to but then you end up like yeah. a lot of people when they go oh i'm going to go into this then they hit that that wall the bureaucratic like uh, we have a very bureaucratic culture and the, the bureaucrats yeah. like I think have grown in power since like the I don't know the 50s or something it's just like yeah. more and more um it's gotta be like the price of tuition in colleges for example you right. know stuff like that like and they're only adding bureaucrats they're adding like assistance yeah. to the president's assistant or like the new office of like a b and c that doesn't deal yeah. with students at all it just deals with other like, like yeah so yeah, they're not adding like more pizza party days and more like, let's teach the students <laughs> mm -hmm. better. Let's build a new student yeah. learning lab. They're not doing as much of that as. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like there might be some of that, but it's like, yeah. And you can see how if there's an assistant to an assistant to an assistant, then that person needs to justify their job by, you know, demanding more paperwork from a professor, which is what I hear from professors. Yeah, they're yeah, just getting all exactly. this busy work that they don't have time to do. Right. They don't have time with students anymore because they're busy. Yeah. Like filling out these weird arbitrary forms and yeah that's just 
I have a taste of that in my job. I don't have that much. I shouldn't oh, complain as much as no, I do no, no, probably, no. but I'm just allergic to it, you know? It's, yeah. It stinks because you, you see the waste. And like, again, if, if yeah. you're just trying to make yeah. the money, then the waste is actually kind of like a positive. It's like, oh, I'm not really working. I'm just filling out paperwork. This is easier than my yeah. job. But if yeah. you're like, oh, I could be doing something more more impactful, yeah. um, then yeah. it's, it's just frustrating. Like, that's why you see people leaving the bureaucracies into like these digital experiments or into mm. less mm. like less paying jobs or less mm -hmm. impactful yeah. jobs to yeah do you think that's like i mean i see a lot of people kind of going toward um tech companies and maybe that's part of the reason that they flee other areas and they're like well you know tesla will be a place that i could just do my i don't know maybe that's just a random thought i'm having but like um it seems like a lot of people that I know at least have, have at times put more faith into those private enterprises and not in government yeah, yeah. work. Definitely, that is part works. of it. Yeah, because the, the trust in, I mean, just to, to tie it into like what happened in the US this week, right? Like the trust in the institutions mm -hmm. is eroding and yeah. there's never been mm -hmm. like more people buying into like propagandistic media mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thinking. And yes. I think, um, and rightfully so, a lot of those institutions were corrupt probably a hundred years ago, but like we didn't have yeah. the communication pipelines and yeah. the, the like now, like, unfortunately you can get demolished, your reputation get demolished online for something that was pulled out of context, but also yeah. things are preserved kind of forever. So yeah. if, if a bad person <laughs> does something, it doesn't just like disappear when people forget about it as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah true it can come back up when they say something that contradicts it or whatever like right they said five years ago and, yeah and especially uh, if it's real like so if i um you know was abusive at my work and lost my job if it if it is digitally preserved mm -hmm. i can't like mm -hmm. just move and get a new job like you could be oh, kind yeah, of like yeah. just abuse the system and oh they caught me and then you like a, like in the old west you like move to a new town and then set up your scam of snake oil in the new town yeah. and stuff so it's uh totally but it does it, it does hurt the trust like and i think reciprocally it makes people like john stand out because now integrity mm -hmm. matters because mm -hmm. in a world mm -hmm. without integrity noticing integrity is like twice as useful it doesn't seem like some schmuck it's like no actually yeah. out yeah. of all these uh average or below average like oh i like team integrity over there like i'm gonna stay in that yeah. camp yeah that makes sense i was thinking along some other, like something like that last i think last week like where yeah it was like the the person with integrity often is viewed as like has been viewed as like the weak person yeah, in a sense, yeah. because, you know in our culture and and maybe we are getting to a point where there's going to be such a loss of faith and in, in many things that we're i mean i i do feel that i mean that's why i got attracted to john and, and you probably yeah, yeah. have some of that too like just like Oh, here's someone real. Here's something real. Here's someone who like lives the way that they are talking, you know. And it just it really feels like deeply meaningful to me. And that's why I've gone more toward like working toward religion that's not a religion types of activities, and not so much in like the general wider sense making sphere, you know. Like I just it cut to me. There is so much tied in with caring and having the heart and having the you know the embodiment and all that and yeah yeah um you know bringing in the art um you know i asked john about bringing in like what about what aspects of like religious charity or mutual aid might be reflected in religions that aren't religions you know mm -hmm. um and he said it's a good question but i want to avoid that because of my own personal background mm -hmm. and like seeing corruption in religious institutions which it's tough it is tough about. yeah because the more you start yeah. doing that the more it's organized by like a charismatic leader at some point. <laughs> yeah, totally. So it could like fall back into these patterns that we're trying to extricate ourselves from with great difficulty, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I also feel like this need for that that kind of integrity of care of community um, beyond like, you know, we learned these cool philosophies and now we're able to like dialogue with each other and in, in better, which is good, you know, like definitely all awesome, but I see. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that kind of like 
stereotype that me and uh, me and some of my friends have of like yoga people being like really spiritual and really into their own yeah. you know progress and their own self-development and not so much like a, you know when there's a disaster like the people who show up are often like the churches right no i love churches for that reason schools. yeah my mom was baptized in a like, like late baptized at a church that she really fell in love with and uh they were like a huge mega church and people was like oh i hate those big churches yeah. but then like they built 80 homes a year for people and they did wow. so much good work i remember one time i visited wow. a friend's church and they were like okay it's christmas who wants to donate 50 dollars for a backpack and just like person after person was like i'll do 10 i'll do one i'll do 10. and you're just like oh this is beautiful i'm in like awe of how much generosity wow. is happening here um yeah. so i think it, but it, it and um my friend steve uh i don't know if you know the stoic steve Beatty does the stoic breath and he's mm -hmm. always volunteering. Oh, I've heard of it. Yeah. 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 He's well, it's cool because he's always like on the ground, like clean up Lake Ontario, or he's mm. always like, oh, if you like that, Rob, here's another charity that's in Florida. So he just like, when he hears about it, he has like a <sighs> reference to point people to. So oh, um, that's super cool. Yeah. Like that, that's the kind of like living by example I also like. And, you know, mm -hmm. John pointed out like, you know, doing, you know, pro bono videos and education is also <laughs> yeah. part of that. You know, <laughs> John gives you know, too much. Yeah. The, the oh, idea yeah. that he also teaches at a like the top university, which is a 60 hour a week, intentionally yeah. intense thing, and then still finds time for like all these people that want to participate with him in projects and he yeah. Q&A's all these different places. And totally. yeah, it's, it's like a, uh, he's like some Russian spy, like sneaking around like, oh, <laughs> hello, <laughs> Chancellor, tell me, you're, like he's doing so much. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. And that's, you know, totally like also to me, you know, part of, part of giving or whatever. Yeah. You know, that counts. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't like discount it at all and, and it's necessary. And then I also like, I'm like, how do we, you know, what, if you're looking at like a religion, that's not a religion sort of with like dialogos included as one of the core practices or something. Um, in community building methods like then also like would something more like mutual aid be a better model than charity you know like in the classic sense of like you know we give to each other and and we're yeah, not yeah. like i guess philosophically we're not like the the rich giving to the poor or whatever you know people construe it as no but so that's, that's it. like yeah. like uh, uh enthusiasm right like encouragement i'm encouraging you yeah. Yeah. and i'm giving you courage and you're encouraging yeah. me um like yeah, john yeah. i remember just like a couple of times mentioned on his birthday he had a bunch of people come over and read poems that he liked for his birthday yeah. one time oh my gosh and then i started doing that with some friends that i meet with every week and it was like wow. i i it was my idea i was from the outside of the group but it went great everyone was like that was so different than what we normally do and everyone was like happy and like weepy oh. and excited and and it was like wow. so just yeah like bringing in like celebrating birthdays or um yeah yeah like there's a, a beach near me where they have a little box where you can like put a book in and take a free book like <laughs> it doesn't yeah. have to be oh i'm gonna go to the amazon and like throw bombs at the construction vehicles or whatever yeah totally um, just little things totally. again alexandra yeah. like she's always yeah she brings so much cheer um yeah and, and that's like shouldn't have to she could just be like what's in it for me but she's always yeah. like oh you guys i'm gonna be late i'm so sorry like she just really cares in yeah. her yeah. presence that's that's i think kind of one way and just sharing like yeah, oh we're doing a, like you you said you were doing what was it um some kind of garage sale you were excited about oh yeah yes my family the kids in our family were just like very hyped about it and it was to raise money for diabetes you know right. so wow it's like a at will donation garage sale and yeah just you know community building in the process then and yeah yeah, yeah. That's, family gets that's to bond it, over it. stuff like that is oh. is yeah charity right charity was a virtue uh, but it doesn't yeah. have to be like uh all right you guys now we're gonna go build a a house together or i hate you or whatever like you should feel yeah. bad like uh, yeah that kind of like guilt and then like yeah then there's like a power thing that can creep right in. yeah that's that's where it can be kind of become the the creepy 
charismatic leader that says like oh here's our next charity it happens to yeah. be something i'm really into but don't worry <laughs> totally yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of administrative costs in this one so don't don't look into that too closely yeah yeah, yeah stuff like that for sure that's like what i'm sure john is skeptical about you know in large part not skeptic i don't know but he's he's he was like i'm not the person to answer this question of like how like and I was thinking in terms of scalability for mm -hmm. you know the religion that's not a religion like I feel like that is part of it like there's no scalability without on the ground at least mutual aid in terms of like food housing blah 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 like yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. you know in a very widespread sense well so, and even just as a transformative yeah. practice like just yeah um I don't know uh I live in a little bubble I have plenty of money. I'm around a bunch of safe, middle-class, boring people. But then just going and volunteering and going, oh, this is this is the suffering world the Buddha was talking yeah. about. Like here it yeah. is. It also is in my mind, yeah. trapping me Leaving like a the monkey. Palace. But yeah. Um, wow. So it is tough. That's cool. To, yeah. But that you kind do, of stuff. You, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. You do transform, yeah, through that like just the dramatic difference in perspective and experience. You like it is yeah potentially transformative totally that's what that's what i like about the peer support work you know yeah, yeah. Is, and like then like going on to like you know email lists with like professors and stuff and being like well yeah this is really cool but <laughs> this ain't gonna fly at all with people that i'm you know seeing out here and there are more and more of them unfortunately you know like this the, the crises we face are so overwhelming in the mental health crises is oh them, so obviously. like yeah it just COVID exasperated everything. The yeah. economy is a mess. Uh, yeah. Like I studied organizational psych and you just see like in the fifties, there was this nice middle class and you could participate without education. You could participate, mm. like you just had to have good kind of goodwill and try mm. your best and you could actually mm. get ahead. Mm. And now like the cost of college is insane. Mm. And like, all of the other complicated things are forcing you into like oh i have a service job i can do in the service economy and like yeah. wish i had everything i see the people around me having or yeah. i can like yeah. get the top and like kind of isolate that way it's never been more splitting mm. Mm. um yeah and technology just exacerbates yeah. that because if you're really good with tech mm. and good with information yeah. processing or you're like kind of self-sufficient as a thinker then yeah you can dance around yeah. and get the top but if you're not if you're kind of like I just wanted to be part of the community. I thought that would be enough. Then yeah. you just end up yeah. being paycheck to paycheck or worse. Totally. Um, it's very isolating socially from like the kiddos I see, especially um, in terms of yeah. technology on top of all the poverty and the, you know, abuse and other issues. Like they're then expected to kind of just be on their phones because everyone else is and they don't develop social skills to even right. learn how to connect from their end either you know and that's all alien that might as well be like russian yeah. or something yeah yeah, yeah. yeah totally but yeah i remember at that program that i was telling you about she would say like she would use kind of jargon to try and get them into that culture so that they could like uh mm -hmm. assimilate more healthily into it and, and use it as mm -hmm. a resource rather than mm -hmm just mm -hmm. be angry at it or have it be angry at them like all of that confusion of mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but it's really hard because again like it takes like a two people per person full time mm -hmm. to be kind of uh dale carnegie programs or all these different kind of like character building mm -hmm. and perspective building and perspective shifting like it's so um and they're not like high functioning people like i'm yeah my traumas i have a bunch of money to throw at them and i have a bunch of other like positive traits yeah. to like keep me floating while i deal with the problems within me but yeah. if you're just like too much of the opposite then it's like oh yeah uh, socially people don't like me so they don't want to help me and i don't have the yeah. resources to throw at it yeah it's, it's yeah uh, it's yeah it's really hard to build those bridges with people in those yeah. cases when they just haven't had they can't even envision that possibility as a you know like mm. i mean there there's just so much fear in even having hope or possibilities mm. presented to them a lot of the time you know um yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's like okay, really I'll, be, I'll open up and i'll be vulnerable and then i'll be disappointed again or whatever yeah yep yeah. exactly yep and you know if you if you come in with people and you're like 
let's get a little off subject, but if you're like, you know, oh yeah, no, you know, you can do it. You can, you know, things will work out. It's like, well, my evidence is that it hasn't for this reason and this reason and this reason is what's yeah. your evidence that it's going to work out. Like, cause I need some good, I need, and it's logical, you know, it's they, their evidence might be based in heuristics and biases and all kinds of things, you know, and, and, um, you know, and, and various, very like extenuating circumstances that they grew up in or something yeah, yeah but yeah. that's what they've lived so but that's how know. we work that's how our mind is it's all just yeah. quick framing of oh i can trust you i can't trust you okay good yeah. i like alexandra I'll, I'll invest more there oh i don't trust that person they're yeah. pontificating too much it's all yeah like heuristics and stuff and and yeah if you don't have that base it. yeah yeah we are and and like that's why it's so great like people like like christ or the buddha or, or marcus aurelius is because like once you see something as possible, then you can mm. imitate it so much more easily mm. than if it's yeah. never existed. Just like, well, in theory, humanity should always mm -hmm. be able to get together because we all hate pain and love pleasure. So why don't we mm. just work together? But then, <laughs> like, if you've never seen an example of that, it's much yeah. harder than going like, okay, well, I can emulate John. That's why another strength of people like him is that mm. not mm. only is he telling you, oh, okay, not you can make sense of the world, practices are better. But then he's like, no, I've learned a lot and I do a ton of practices. So it's not just coming out of yeah. like my mouth. It's coming out of my history. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen someone so self-correcting in my life when it comes <laughs> yeah, to like yeah. in you the moment. Imagine, you can imagine John as having never like had those aha moments and not even being the same person, right? If when he was in his yeah, 20s or 30s yeah. and didn't yeah. go like, I took Tai Chi and I started meditating and I started loving philosophy. Like, yeah. had he not really, like, soaked those in the way yeah. he did, he just yeah. wouldn't, he'd have the same DNA, but nothing else or whatever. Right, yeah, which is, yeah, that's, like, a great aspirational point that this is all of us. We're all capable of going in all these different directions, mm -hmm. um, you know, and he, you know, not, I don't <laughs> I know John, John would be embarrassed even probably about <laughs> this conversation, but just, like, to see someone like having achieved that, like you said, you you know you can't be what you can't see is what I usually think of it as. Like you know, That's from right, the queer yeah. community, often queer community people will say that. Um, but okay. if you, it's helped so much, definitely. Or even to see him and then be like, oh well, this is my you know, it gives you an example not to emulate completely, but then me with my personality and upbringing and all this could be more self-correcting yeah, yeah, as yeah. well, and that could be really great, you know humans learn through imitation so well. Like when I teach, I, I've had the thought a thousand times, like, oh, I'll just have a PowerPoint. I'll just hit one button while I talk for an hour mm -hmm. and it'll just show everything. But instead, like I make myself type it out, do the drawing, do the math on the whiteboard or whatever. And oh, just because yeah. like they're seeing my mechanical actions as well as yeah. me saying what to care about and what to do. And yeah. like babies, like I love watching babies. I try not to be too creepy when I do it, but I love just like, they just stare at everything and they're yeah. just like blinking and staring because they're soaking up, not the knowledge, not the propositional knowledge, mm -hmm. but all of the like movement and procedure and mm -hmm. qualia and everything. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, mm -hmm. so having, having a role model that can say, you wouldn't look at me now, but I was a bigger mess than you were. And then they're like, ah, whatever, they discount it. But if you really were, yeah. then over yeah. time, they kind of go, oh, that is true. Like Rob and Rachel have grown a lot from a place that was like where I am or, or to a place like yeah. I'd like to be. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, be the yeah. change you want to see is, is powerful. Exactly, yeah. And yeah, it's like that can be applied in, in what a lot of people are doing in different ways. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was something you were just saying that I'm... I wanted to, well, it'll come back probably, but <laughs> <laughs> it definitely makes sense. You know, I, I think um, the sense of humility that I see in people is especially important at this stage of the the game and culture, you know, and that, that self-correction and that admittance of ignorance and things like that, you yeah, know, yeah. That really, um, really feels right to me right now and I, I operate a lot on intuition which is different from you know what you know we don't talk about that a ton in the in the, the world that we inhabit I don't think that, that we inhabit together but yeah. um you know there's a there's like insight and that kind of thing but I do sort of you know 
like try to feel my way through this this whole cult this little subculture we're in yeah, um, yeah. that's why character is so much more valuable I think it was kind of like this like you said earlier like the nice guy syndrome and stuff like i don't, don't want to finish yeah. last i don't want to like character doesn't matter yes yeah but character is so so powerful right now and like yes. I'd, I'd rather have someone that was kind of wrong but was trying right and then the, if they could correct it's much easier to change your idea yeah. than your personality <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's totally that's it that's where you were talking about all that stuff and i was thinking procedural knowing and and um how like you know, we that sometimes also gets a little doesn't get as much attention as the other three P's of John's, you know, but mm -hmm. when you're like, like in, in um, body work therapy, Diane Jacobs, the physical therapist who follows John's work would talk about like, she's like, well, good body work can give you participatory and perspectival knowing, you know, enhance that, but it's through the procedural level. And so maybe that's our entry point. And yeah, like, yeah. You know, that was lost, talking. right? Like, um, um, uh, vitalism and i got this book mm. um about mm. gothi and and uh, mm. newton was like into weird occult stuff and so all of mm. the mm. all of that procedural stuff gets kind of foreshad mm. like overshadowed and it's so yeah. interesting that like how you're doing things is as important as what you're thinking and what you're doing like the yeah. the cynics versus the stoics when john would talk about those those groups and it's like oh mm. the mm. the cynics thought it was all what 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 but then mm. the Stokes were like, it's what and mm. how. It's like you can be in the mm. market and be virtuous. You're not just like de facto mm. bad because of who you are or where you are or what you are. Yes. Um, that yeah. makes total sense. Yeah. That and like, you know, I know people in our <laughs> shared world talk about things in terms of like, you know, embodiment and enactment. And, you know, there there definitely is procedural knowing involved obviously the practices that we're doing in our ecologies um are procedural but the sense to me and just like in watching people's behavior is really important as you're talking about mm -hmm. it like being a baby and being like okay so what is this person doing <laughs> on a regular basis you know and can i trust them and mm -hmm. you know like deeply and like you said it's harder to change your personality or to to build character i guess is you know mm -hmm. um than it is to um yeah, just change your your opinion of something or your thought about something. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, and and then people see that, like when you're presencing your your character unconsciously or not like not like, oh, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna be a really great image for the world or something. It sounds ridiculous. But like right. if you just are <laughs> being a caring person around other people, um even though they're they may not be registering that or they might be saying like oh that's mm -hmm. not really important that was like a background feature the more of that that happens yeah. if there was a critical mass of people just uh like i uh last week whenever i'd get food i'd be like hooray my food is here when i'd go like out to eat and people yeah. are like what yeah. i'm like i'm just sharing my feelings that was happening inside and i brought it outside <laughs> and they're nice. like they're like, oh yeah, they smile because they forget. Like everywhere you go, it's like, what's your order? What's your number? Are you done? Get out of the way. And it's just like yeah, sharing yeah. a feeling of like, oh, I'm so grateful for this, but not in words, but like in a little body language. Oh yeah. Um, That's like very fundamental caring. That's like not um when we think about like showing that you care, it like usually it's like, oh, send roses or send some. No, it's very simple. Or, yeah. It's just like you know? <laughs> it's just hanging there free all the time. Just like yeah. takes up a half a moment to to mm. go oh i'm sad that you're not going to make it or like again yeah. like just over over emoting a little bit to kind of yeah be like what feels like too much maybe for a culture would you say well it just it surprises people because people don't do it they're so like in the mm -hmm. conversation and the narrative and the the um the nomological to use john's language yeah. that when you're just like oh hooray <laughs> i'm so glad <laughs> to see you or whatever yeah. they're like huh what I, I'm a disembodied being. I'm just a, an idea factory. <laughs> yeah. I'm stuck in this this horrible corpse of a of a thing. Yeah, um, this meat suit kind yeah, of. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, like I love some of our our emailing where just dance is so cool, and, yeah. and it's this whole way yeah. of being like in the mystery of life and in your it, you're like it is a narrative in a sense that like there's an unfolding and there's a dynamic and, and a uh aliveness but it's it's not at all like 
And now I will point that out. And now I will say that. And I will wait for you to say that. It's just this, yeah. you know, uh, or smells. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you ever go out in nature and just like smell the, the trees. Like mm. you, I'll, I'll be mm. walking like, oh, mm. this lavender of these flowers over there oh, smells yes. amazing. And yes. There's nothing propositional happen. I don't like write it down no. and go, ah, oh, lavenders. At 2.42, I was happy because of the lavenders. I just, <laughs> I just feel it. <laughs> right. And no one's going to be like, so how's your day? And, you know, I mean, my friends would probably do this, but, you know, people don't typically respond like, well, I smelled this amazing lavender plant this morning, you know. Well, that's great, though, but that's what we need, I think. That's part yeah. of solving the meaning crisis is just re-embodying <laughs> ourselves and our senses and in our, yeah. our actual phenomenology, not like describing the phenomenology. Uh, yeah, like, well, you know, that feels very exciting to me to hear that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> I know I what like, you yeah. mean when you say that or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, it feels so important to, like, to to have those little, the little things, as they say, and, and that's, yeah, like, our mm. culture has ways of sort of discounting it and damning with faint praise, almost, when it comes to, like, it's the little things in life or whatever, and, like, um, we, you know, it's kind of said in tongue in cheek oftentimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you're yeah. right, stealing the culture, it has to, you know, has to also include this stuff on a moment. But, and this kind of ties in with like the candor thing that I was. Yeah, yeah, you didn't mention earlier. Yeah. You know, being able to be at least participatorily engaged enough that you're going to occasionally bring up something that's happening with you and your experience that that's presenced for you instead of like yeah always being sitting back behind the screen of your uh -huh. identity you know and strategizing yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and yeah it is less strategic that's true yeah i like that you, you said that because we are like oh what's this meeting about like what should i yeah. what person should i bring up and how should i act yeah. in it but totally. but yeah there's so much happening and, and it it i think that i heard i think layman mock uh, or no, it wasn't Layman, it was uh, Zach Stein with um, someone, and, and he was like, um, he called it wisdom tainment. He called this movement because it's like, okay, I just watched eight videos in a row that are about wisdom, and it just becomes like a meme that was trying to yeah. fight the other memes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, and you can see that, like, marketing strategy ramping up in places now too and yeah and it undermines the good faith too because then people mm -hmm. think people like john i've seen in the comments where they're like oh this guy's faking it this guy's in it for something it's like <laughs> he literally yeah. couldn't get less out of this i don't think other than like the joy of seeing the world become better or whatever <laughs> like the yeah <laughs> it was like yeah like some of some of the most powerful moments for me are when you can see that he's really um moved by people you know experiencing his work and, and transforming through it and and yeah it's to me it's so clear and I, I really feel sad and frustrated knowing that there are a lot of people who you know that would look at it with suspicion immediately like just you know like even within our little little subculture there's just a lot of that that heuristics of of um or here uh, hermeneutics of suspicion being in the foreground, you know, and popping up all the time. Yeah, unconscious cynicism. I was cynical for a long time. And like, in, and I did a lot of circling actually, I had about five months of circling once to twice a week while I was also just developing some really deep, good friendships. And all of a sudden I go, I was just lonely and, and so cynical. And, oh. and when you're in that kind of like, oh, that's dumb, that's meaningless. Oh, that's, mm. you, you just get this kind of cynical reflex. Um, yeah and then it comes out of people mm -hmm. or whatever skeptical or, or yeah. power dynamics i guess is another kind of way to yeah be cynical sure yeah like a lot of postmodern philosophy probably grew yeah. out of like modern dis disenchantment and a sense mm. of alienation right like oh that's really insightful yeah that's true yeah mm -hmm. like a two like a circular process happening where then it also gave rise to more alienation and right it wasn't just like hey let's be postmodern it was like from the yeah. fallingness of the fake greatness of the modernism yeah and, and personal alienation probably and like, while well, we know you know it's true and like the stranger and things like that but yeah um, yeah yeah well alienation is such an interesting phenomenon right because you can seem really happy on the outside and seem like mm, oh no i'm in yeah. i've got the car or the cell phone or the 
whatever it is yeah. and then not realize like you're so psychologically alienated and yeah the persona is is like you you confuse your persona and your ego and yourself or something and you're like no everything's fine I look and I'm happy and I'm doing all the stuff and you're yeah. just like oh there's a part of me that just is miserable yeah and then like you're saying it can manifest as just externalized like projection of suspicion and cynicism mm -hmm. like for me actually it was pre-gender transition that my sense of cynicism was a lot higher you know like, uh -huh. I was just not participatorily matched with my environment right yeah you're having a cognitive dissonance like almost from your your identity or something or from yeah the social identity or yeah it's totally. I remember when you said in John's interview uh something and it was like oh wow like you had like an aha moment about how happy you were or how you like fit better in yeah. the world and yeah. it was just like oh that's that's beauty that's like meta what john talks about when someone can go through a transformation yeah. and then just be in a more optimal fit with the universe through mm -hmm. their hard work and through their soul searching and through their efforts and stuff and yeah um, yeah and suddenly realize oh yeah like what i'm caring about was gosh it's so hard to ex to express it and i feel i feel like it ties in with your sense of like you know being lonely and then being sort of cynical because of that you know what i mean yeah it's yeah hurt anyway um, yeah no no that's fair it's like you know you you your care is somehow misplaced or it's like it's it's like you're caring wrong yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something you know <laughs> like you still i still care about things i still you know i still distrust institutions i still you know <laughs> like that none of that has changed but there yeah, is yeah. A, lo a layer of cynicism and and uh detachment that's gone mm. you know like I, I feel like i'm working toward caring for and 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 somewhat away from caring about if that makes sense <laughs> like it used to be i would be like oh i care about politics or i care about the society and, and everything just sucks and it's stupid and, oh, and blah 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 and now i'm like okay well how do i care for these things like i feel like that there's oh wow of, right because yeah. you've gotten out of the ideological battle like the yes. whole world that, that's such a yeah that's half of the the propositional tyranny is it's so ideal everything is so ideological like how you garden or how you drive it's like what are you a libertarian gardener ah, like i'm so mad at you why are you the daisies yeah. not closer to the tulips or whatever it's like yeah totally no, 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 I'm, I'm just dirt and flowers that's the only <laughs> constructs that are valid right now yeah um, totally like i could see actually my like local foodie friends getting into some kind of fight like that yeah yeah there's the, everything Hardly. bleeds into like identity and and into like Peter Lindbergh's tribalism like he doesn't talk about it a lot but that was like one of his big early successes is like the 26 yeah. tribes or whatever yes. he did and it's yeah. like yeah it's just always like oh, what are you a Christian Ugh. like yeah I don't even you don't even know the person it's like I, I, I MLK is like mm -hmm. a bad guy because he wasn't like angry enough in the right ways when like yeah uh, that blows my totally. mind that, that yeah that's like really just like i see that ex those examples all the time and like the, the um the young people i work with you know just kind of like a sense of just like a lot of anger and fault finding yeah that's yeah, not even the anger, own, but, right you know they've got it from other people i mean like, they don't even necessarily you know think that way themselves all the time or they don't haven't really examined it or whatever right. on their own but that's what they're they're hearing that this person sucks like mlk sucks because yeah yeah whatever reason he wasn't trans inclusive or something you know just make fun of that for a minute but like right, you know right. something something or another that yeah is, yeah you know was a problem he's problematic and then should get canceled and you know etc yeah and 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 or yeah it's it's such a when your identity matter like when your views matter more than your actions mm, and like yeah, people yes. just don't really get it's like, oh, well, I don't care what they did as long as they're like, like the group that I like, that matters more yeah. sometimes. Or my group says they're bad, so therefore they're bad. And like, I can't deviate and say I like them without risking my relationship to my group. Yeah. And so I'm just gonna adopt this like position yeah. I don't really believe in. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's like really scary to watch happen to yourself to mm. play, have other people feel that way toward you, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, I'll bet. And really misinterpret things according to like kind of like especially because jargon gets in the way so much like you know they, they hear something you say and then they filter it through some kind of jargon that's in the whole battle it's, like, it's a narrative about. battle it's just like okay mm -hmm. as soon as i size up your narrative i can destroy it and now i'm, I'm yeah. done with you you're not yeah like if i'm like well robert you know you're coming from a colonialist you yeah, know yeah i've had that happen to me i'm like what you don't know me at all like i was to no <laughs> effects and country music and rap and opera like i'm totally, <laughs> totally. hard to categorize and, and totally like yeah did you start a colony in africa i've started zero colonies i've owned no people that i'm aware of i definitely participate in things made in the third world i wish there was like mm -hmm. i'm doing i'm not perfect but like yeah it's it's yeah. it's so weird that uh that's what i like about like watching your emails and like greg's listserv is like I think I said this to you in an email too, like you're exploring and you're just trying to like, and Greg's said that about some of like, you'll write like four paragraphs and mm -hmm. they're just honest thoughts. You're like, okay, I'm, this is super heady, super intellectual stuff, or it's got like a long history and I'm just trying to make sense of it. And, and then it's yeah. great because Greg, um, like Greg's pretty kind about giving people the benefit of the doubt and uh going like yeah. okay cool let me i'm i gotta go for a walk right now but tomorrow i'm gonna write a really long response to this or whatever yes. and like yeah she yes. does that it's it's um because that's yeah. what it takes like you said you mentor people and it's it's or, or have these peer relationships with people yep. and you really can't judge too quickly you need to kind of go into their history mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. as like a friendly observer and then throw yeah. the rope to pull them out of the water or whatever. Yes. You can't just say, here's the rope. I keep hitting it on your hand. Like, yeah, grab like it, here, you fool. Here's a sheet of coping skills. Go fucking learn it and then come back next week. But you that's know, how it's it like... kind of feels like. Yeah, it feels like <laughs> you go see a therapist. They're like, what, haven't you done this yet? Like, we've got 20 yeah. more minutes and I gave you totally. the checklist. Like, they literally, totally. for like uh, a lot of the DSM, they just check off things and then <sighs> give you the drug or whatever. Mm, um, mm, it's so painful so, yeah like yeah. the best example that it came, it come, it's come up like three times in my mind while we're talking so far so i'll just randomly mention it but Please. uh hearing voices network group that um one of my hvn mentors like ran um she was like she was running this group and she was and it's for people with all kinds of um unusual experiences you know whatever paradigm you put on that hearing voices other people don't or seeing visions other people don't etc uh -huh. and this guy came to the group and he some at some point in the group just threw a chair into the middle of the room and walked out and like kind of stomped out and she was like okay you know and so she followed him out and like through like kind of a humble conversational approach she discovered uh -huh. that what he wanted to do was punch a person across the circle right and, so and that voice bad was behavior was actually him. amazingly good compared was to the amazingly. alternative yeah. yes it was the absolute best for him because his voices yeah. were saying you have to attack this person yeah wow and he threw he was like no but i'll throw the chair instead just to appease because yeah, he had a new kind of caring eyes. he was caring so much about this group yeah. that he wanted to hate that he actually yeah. like averted this behavior yeah like yeah it's, it's, yeah and that's the way people feel right like you're trying to quit alcoholism or or mm. drugs or abusive relationship or a bad work-life mm. balance like mm -hmm. it's it's like okay I I wish I could care differently about how I care about things but that's not just yeah. like a, a propositional yeah. declaration or whatever yeah yeah I think that yeah it just comes back around to that whole conversation we've been having this whole time like well, it's powerful like how to care yeah. differently in the sense of caring being so so deep and important and like somewhat maybe undervalued i would i would i would propose undervalued in the conversations yeah something to be more conscious of and, and to like yeah. care more about right because that yeah. i love harry frankfurt have you read any of his essays just um on bullshit i love that book though yeah yeah, yeah. it's really good he brings it up in there it's like if you like your life and then like that you like it like that's mm -hmm. the good life i think it's a really mm. succinct definition because you have like first order like drives and preferences but you could not like them on a like a reflective basis yeah so, yeah but when you can do both like especially with you have like the practices and the support and give yourself time and all those kind of things yeah. then you can go 
huh, I like my life. And I like it in the moment, like both in the reflective mm. and in the live. Mm. Um, and that's what that, that person was doing. They're like, okay, I want to be able to reflect back on this later and like mm. my decision. Mm -hmm. So instead of yeah. like doing the impulse, I'm going to do something differently. And then at least I'll have some dignity <laughs> that I yeah. resisted that. Totally. Um, Unfortunately, my mentor was, you know, just so good at, she's so good at hvn groups um yeah. you know and, and putting herself at equal or sometimes below the other person in order to like build that connection you know it's, yeah yeah wow that's so, awesome that's an awesome uh, yeah another idol of mine <laughs> you know aspirational figure no idols bad idols bad just kidding no but being inspired <laughs> by people is good and having like heroes and it's really just who's your hero it's not that heroes are yeah. bad i think the mm -hmm. the charismatic leader has done so much damage mm -hmm. that we don't mm -hmm. don't do that and and like yeah, yeah. It's, it's important to to admire your grandparents or to have yeah especially when right. you're young like mentors are so missing from a lot of my yeah. friends are like oh i've dropped out of college or i've done this or i mm -hmm. i wish i was doing something else but none of them have mentors and it's like oh you just, yeah i i gravitate towards there. mentors yeah. when i was going into like bigger commitments and they helped so much mm. and, and just mm. like having someone like you're doing with the people you work with to say like mm -hmm. oh have you thought about this or i see you like this and go, yeah oh now i do too thanks for pointing that out like totally <laughs> yeah, like when you walk out of a store without you responding to the clerk whatsoever that might i see that as being a little unusual you know right. or something like that yeah yeah my my uh my karate teacher does that he brings stuff like that up he's like it's easy to be good to people i would like you guys just when you pop into my zoom meeting to say hi once you know and it's like yeah. oh yeah that is we are humans i forgot <laughs> just a simple little yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um well on that note i have a human i need to go yeah yeah i'm gonna say this is this seems like a great time to stop uh, yeah it feels very full circle and yeah yeah and well, also thank you like so much. This is uncovering some stuff for me that i'll probably I, th I think slowly so i'll probably you know ponder this over days weeks months yeah or whatever. yeah no this has been a great talk for sure i i like i was saying i loved hearing your questions john seemed to always read them around the same time as mine so they'd be like oh it's now <laughs> rachel's question or like after rachel's there's rob so I'm like oh i'm paying attention a lot and totally, you always ask yeah. about things that i also like and Yes, all yeah. the other mutual things and then meeting you on that call with Rafe and Nathan and everybody. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, she's just a normal, reasonable person. This is great that. Uh, yeah, so it seemed like a good opportunity to reach out. That's, that's cool. Thank you. I mean, I didn't mean like, yes, I am. But I meant like I felt some, like I was like, oh, Robert, like feels very like down to earth and connecting and okay. friendly and and not, um, you know, da, 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 the Trump <laughs> up or something, you know, yeah. like and it just that was really just like I said, like I've been saying this whole time, you know, that's, it's becoming more and more important to me to just try to seek out genuine connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, the relationship part is so, it's part of communitas and, and yeah. friendship are virtues. They're classic virtues that are like, mm -hmm. they're, it's not just what are you going to do for me? It's really so much yeah. simpler than that. It totally is. So next time, um, if we talk again, which I hope we get. Yeah, we should definitely do this again if you want, yeah. That'd be awesome. Um, I want to hear, I would love to hear more about your take as like a dude living in our culture, like on friendship, because a lot of my male, trans male or cis male or whatever, you know, yeah. clients, like, you know, they just don't have friends and they don't, you know what I mean? Like, and that's, yeah, yeah. I know that's like average American now has like, average American guy has like zero close friendships. Is that true? But I, I think I heard it on one of John and someone else. I don't remember who said it or if it was a guess I, or what i would take friendship over meeting god i think they'd be pretty close because <laughs> like it just yeah. does so much like the practices yeah. are great but like yeah yeah friendship is is like a, a non supernatural way to live a mm. very very meaningful life mm. um, yeah so yeah that's we can definitely great. talk about that that'd be awesome cool let's do it all right thanks so much rachel and yeah, thank uh, you I'll see you around Robert. Yeah, see you around. Take care. You too. Bye.